we're back. It's truth bomb Tony time. And uh, we haven't been back for a couple of weeks because I don't know, we got busy and we don't want to give you Tony too much, too many times because then you'll become complacent and complacency is the name of the game at the moment. Isn't it truth bomb Tony? Oh, truth bomb Tony, Tony two times. As long as it's not Tony two timer, <laughs> there'd be an accident at night. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be seeing you in a fortnight, would I? Uh, Tony, uh, uh, what's no. uh, let's start off with what's going on in the markets. Are you excited about the markets? Are you bored with the markets? Is it time to take a holiday because it's August? What's going on? It's probably one of the quietest times I've seen of late over the last, certainly over the last couple of years. Uh, a lot of our stocks are getting sold off on low volume. It's, it's a period where people are selling for the sake of selling. I've seen some stocks where the market depth, the buy side gets obliterated, that calls further panic. Uh, my volume of phone calls lately is probably down about 80%. What? Wow. But yeah, yeah, no, some days I can have between 30 to 100 phone calls. Now it's running anywhere from three to five, uh, you know, it might crack 10, but, there's just a lack of interest. But what I should reiterate to viewers is this is where the fortunes are made. Ah. This is where you collect your wealth tokens, as I call it. And all you're doing is planting the seeds to hopefully reap them 10 times over when the market picks up. So now's the time to go through the share pages in the AFR, attack it with a highlighter, which I'll do shortly. And again, just believe in the companies you hold and realise that this weakness is across the board. The person selling your share down 10% doesn't have inside information. They probably are bored or need money to pay a bill. But um, yeah, ever since I started advising, which was 23 years ago, believe it or not, this is just a repeat phase of what we go through in the junior end of the market. And I can predict that tax loss selling in 2022 is going to be very ugly because a lot of companies that join a bandwagon, acquire projects based on a bandwagon, are going to go back to becoming shells. And that's where a lot of small time speculators will get obliterated. So my message is if you're in quality juniors with a clear growth profile and strong management, you either buy more or you hang in there and go get a bloody hobby or get a life and stop watching it every five seconds. <laughs> well, I think stop watching it every five seconds is, is good advice. And I also think strong management is good advice because we've said this before, Tony, a lot of people don't actually understand what it is they're investing in. And they're on, the, uh, they're on social media saying, where do I put my money? And then believing some person that says, oh, buy this stock. And they don't even know what they're buying. They don't know whether it's an oil and gas or a gold or a or an iron ore stock? Well, they can believe the Finfluencers in a bikini. They, they can believe all these sports stars or kids that, you know, the TikTok brigade, or they can start listening to people who actually know what the hell they're doing. And what, what's happened is TikTok and all these mediums have made, created a new generation of young people that are going to get wiped out on the stock market, never, never to return. Wow. So it, it happens. It happens all the time. You go through these promotional phases, like we had the rock stars during the dot-com bubble. Then we, we had David Boone promoting a Tasmanian gold float. And then you go to the likes of Paris Hilton, Elon Musk, <laughs> and a lot of other celebrities and porn stars all promoting cryptocurrency rubbish. Absolute rubbish. And well, you, you you can't dismiss the fact that Joe Biden is very much of the view that we're going. You know, he's all about the green revolution. He's all about pushing EVs and and pushing that sort of zero carbon emissions, as are many other countries around the world. So there should be from that strength in things like the nickel price, uh, potentially iron ore, with all the infrastructure that they say they're going to be building with all this funny money. Are there certain sectors that even though they're quiet at the moment, long term, you think have got a good strength behind them? That's, look, that's just the ongoing 
process of storytelling, which I, I hear all the time, like demand is always growing, shortages. But a lot of these commodities, they get hit with speculators. The EV take-up in Australia is pitiful. Yep. So, you know, the lithium companies are doing well. Uh, we go back to the past uranium bubbles. Uh, that still hasn't really caught on. There is talk of supply shortages coming. But if you buy into a theme and try, keep trying to catch bandwagons, you're going to lose money because it doesn't matter where the long-term trend is, companies are still going to have their individual growth cycles and they're going to have some nasty corrections along the way. So this commodities to infinity, green energy to infinity, yes, but if you buy at the wrong, at the wrong time, it slams to the slaughter. So what I do is I don't look at bandwagons. I look at individual companies, block out all the noise, block out all the rubbish media articles, which people keep posting to try and support their positions are underwater in. But to me, oh, look, you can have your own focus. You can jump on a sector. If you buy it at the right price, you're going to do extremely well. If not, you're going to do 80% of your money. So, oh, look, I agree, changes are being made. But again, look at where we are. There's zero precedent for where the world is right now with the interest rates, this pandemic, which doesn't, doesn't seem to be slowing down. And then we've got, you know, economies, especially in Australia, starting to hurt where business confidence has just fallen through the floor. So certainly no precedent. And sadly, a lot of the leaders and economic think tank really has no idea or no way or no real way of getting us out of it. So just, just be, be careful. And sometimes it pays to don't read all these conspiracy theories. Don't start writing copious letters to the editors because no one really cares. Just focus on protecting your balance sheet, protecting your family and buying low and trying to sell higher. That, that's what I've done. That's okay, why so I've for, gone. So for, but for those people, and, you know, I get this occasionally, you know, those people that turn around and say, well, what should I do? I haven't been in the market before. Apart from becoming a client of yours, what would you say to these people? Because I don't want them to get burnt and you just know that they will get burnt because they'll they'll buy a specky stock that they don't really understand and, as you say, lose 80% of their money and then that's it, they, they're done. They'll never come back again. Well, my, my experience with speculation was I went onto some financial forums. This was like in 1997 and I read columns in the Sydney Morning Herald and I lost money for four to five years. Uh, straight up, just bought too much rubbish, bought small parcels, believed all the hype. So what I suggest to people is that to really make it work with a full service broker, I'm going to suggest a minimum of absolute bare minimum of $10,000. And that's still going to be a huge struggle. Once you start getting towards twenty to thirty thousand dollars, then I can work with it. Uh, viewers need to be mindful that uh, brokerage you are paying uh, one to one point one percent. So what I'd suggest for a lot of those people starting out would be if you're buying five hundred to a thousand dollar parcels, is certainly just go through a broker where you can get trades for about ten dollars. That would be my suggestion, and perhaps look at some of the stocks that we discuss, or if you're prepared to, to pay the fees that are going to be a lot higher, start, you know, find someone that's going to help you help you grow. Because I'm starting to get emails from people saying, look, I, I need some help. I can't do this myself. I want to, I want to have a life. Yep. But um, I mean, it's, it's an absolute journey. I, I get phone calls from clients that I've been with 20 years that are still, they haven't changed. One of them rang yesterday and he he's the, the example of complacency. He put seven grand into Northern Star and pulled out 1.2 million. Holy and, uh, moly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said he's a balance of being comatose and complacent. And he's, he's it's, it's tied ass Tuesday with this guy because he actually lives in the same suburb. And once every six months, he'll buy me a, an arm and flat white or if I'm lucky, a croissant. So I don't know what the moral of the story is there, but um, 
you know, it's a he journey. Got lucky. He, he got lucky. And then, then he doubled up on Atlantic Gold as well. Got taken over, I think, by um, St. Barbara. For That's t- right. Whatever. So, so there, there is money to be made in being complacent. And I've had other clients that don't open their mail and they make money as well because they find shares they didn't know they had. But I, I think I'm losing my train of thought here. But, but don't think you can do it yourself. I know women in bikinis are more attractive than me. I know you want to listen to them more. But really, they've got SFA. They know SFA about markets. All it is is marketing. And I just think this... We will certainly start to reach peak influencer levels shortly because people just realise it. it's complete crock. And just like music gets back to guitar, bass and drums, uh, spec stocks will get back to fundamentals. And the sad part is that 80% of them wouldn't know what that was. A couple of questions for you, Tony. Given the fact that we've had an awful lot of IPOs listing in the last 12 months or so, do you think there's going to be some M&A activity? I mean, there's been a lot listing. There's been, to be honest, probably too many. Uh, do you think there's going to be some consolidation or do you think some of those companies are just going to go quietly to the wall? You know, they've, they've raised the money. They're not going to get very far. And next year they may not be around. What's your view on the amount well, of listings? I, I've actually am being quite selective on the ones I get involved in. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's, you know, my clients will start saying to me, look, these aren't coming on at a premium. Some of them are coming on a, at a small discount. But my, what I reiterate to them is you will not buy this on market cheaper. Okay, support the company that's going to go out and drill to try and find a mine or develop science that results in making human lives better. Just back them because as, if I, if you get involved in business relationships, chances are when the IPO market does go hot again, we're going to get involved. So someone has to fund the, these drilling campaigns, these clinical trials, mm-hmm. because you're not going to fund a drilling campaign passing the plate around at Hillsong. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, what, what was not? I, just I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think we should mention the word Hillsong on this particular uh, evening, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, yeah, so back to your question, Kerry, back, back, back to your question. Yes, there are too many IPOs. A lot of them are regurgitated assets, which means an asset that failed in one company was passed on. Uh, a lot of these will actually, some of the good IPOs can halve in price, uh, they will just keep things ticking along. And then what some of these management teams can do is jump on the next bandwagon. Mm. So, you know, you've got to understand the mechanics of how the junior resource sector works, which I do. And the key is to try and preempt what moves they're going to make. But one of the key themes coming out now is companies are listing with low enterprise value. That means... Let's so just say a $5 million market cap with $3 million cash. You take that away, that gives you an EV of $2 million. So this is actually a good thing to see EV shrinking. And these companies do have tight capital structures. So in the event of a discovery or a breakthrough, they're going to do extremely well. But I guess that's, a, that's one positive now that there's such a huge amount of IPOs and not a lot of interest that they do have to go for that low EV route, uh, rather, pun intended, uh, bikini-clad influencer. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. There are people out there that, have, uh, that would like to know, because uh, I've had the question, I'd like to hear it from your mouth. Uh, does the amount of shares on issue matter if the company has good assets? No, it all gets back to market cap. So you need to look at the stocks that might trade under 10 cents that, uh, that will trade in 0.1 increments. So you can have companies that are, are solid but can turn over hundreds of millions of shares a day and can still have multiple upside moves. I prefer the resource companies with lower shares on issue, say a 10 to 20 cent share price, that I liken them 
I have a saying, it's like run like a canyon. These stocks that can run, run forever, but you, you still have your day trading frenzy stocks. So for me, you know, if there are billions of shares on issue, it can make it hard for a stock to say trade between 0.4 and 0.5 of a cent. Yeah. So once capital structures blow out to a few billion shares on issues, on issue, some of these companies will do a reconstruction. Yeah. So you can look at a stock and say, well, look, this is an 11 cent, 12 cent stock that I think looks as though it can go 25, 30, or you look at 20 cent stocks that can go 50 cent plus. You just, you just have to have a feel for the market and a feel for the company. All right, Tony, uh, let's, can we just go into commodities briefly uh, mm -hmm. before we finish up? I mean, gold was off 4% uh, last week. It's come back a little bit. Uh, silver was pretty much the same, but it's come back. I think overall, I'm still a gold nerd. I'm still a gold bull. I still think that we're uh, in for a longer, stronger for longer with, when it comes to gold and, and even the gold equities. But gold aside, unless you want to make a specific comment about it, gold aside, is there a sector that you like at the moment? Like, for example, I personally think that uranium is, is quite good. It's unloved. Uh, it's a clean energy. And so for the future, I personally think that the uranium stocks could have a nice run. But again, you've got to look at the asset and you've got to have a look at the management. What does Truth Bomb Tony think? What, what are the areas that you're looking at that you think people should potentially be looking into? Yeah, speaking of uh, uranium, I put clients into Ele Elevate, ELA. Oh, and hasn't that Adam. done well? Yeah, and off the side of the boot, we made, some clients made five to almost seven times their money. And the uranium price didn't have to have much hype. So I will then have to go and revisit uranium because what I said to clients was, I'm only going to focus on two stocks. I'm not going to go near the majors because oh. the worst thing you can do with uranium is try and mine it. So look, looking outside the, the commodities, uh, you know, gold has a two, 3% down night and everyone thinks it's the end of the world and all you get all these charters come out on Twitter. But, you know, gold is always going to have a battle. Uh, it's like the gold people versus the Bitcoiners versus the, the, the rest of them are evil in anyone's eyes. So look, I, I think just think you can remain in the gold sector and focus on the companies that are building resources or are drilling for the mother load. And you know, I remember advising clients uh, 20 years ago when the gold price was $251 an ounce exactly. US. So you still can have a vibrant gold sector with a lower gold price. And Bill Beamett from Northern Star managed to grow that company when the gold index lost almost 70% of its value. Oh, really? So what I say to my clients is gold price weakness will allow some of our companies with acquisition aspirations to grow, to buy assets at cheap prices. So if you're buying an emerging gold company, you have to give it three to five years and sit through all the turbulence, all the noise, but for people like us above 50, um, we obviously want um, a quick date. They're the main event, don't we? Let's be honest. We do. We do. And then, But there's some good ones out there. And, um, and look, <coughs> we're talking about gold, so I'm going to say it. <coughs> Goldevents.com.au, there's a virtual gold conference next week, and it's free, and it's online. So for all those people in New South Wales that are locked up, you poor things, you know, my heart goes out to them. Tony, you're over there in WA. You just shut the border and everything's fine with you guys. And, and the Premier says, no, nah, we don't want any of those people from the East. Well, for all of you in the East that can't go anywhere, jump onto goldevents.com.au and register for the virtual gold conference. It's on next Thursday. So, Tony, that's just in, in light of what you're saying about gold, because I've got Rick Rawl and I've got Barry Dawes and a few other people chatting and lots of gold mining companies. And as you say, the, you know, Northern Star did very, very well when the index was down 70%. So... You know, don't take just the gold price as being uh, uh, the, the, the number to look at. Yeah, and I'll also call uh, Rick Rule Mr. Common Sense. I think I'd implore everyone to listen to Rick. He 
oozes mm. common mm. sense. He understands the market. He understands the psychology. And yeah. he's made some very brave calls. And more often than not, the guy's right. So yeah, and, and do you know what's time. interesting at the moment, Tony, is he was with Sprott and he's now left. He's semi-retired. So when I chat to Rick, it's going to be Rick Rawl unplugged. So because he's not he's not burdened by having to follow the rules, so to speak. So we'll be I'll be asking him some interesting questions. So yeah, it'll probably be one of the first times you hear Rick Rawl unplugged. So it'll be fascinating to hear what he's got to say. But you're right, you know what? As well, he's so humble and loves yeah. helping people, but he's been very successful. Yeah. Well, no, I guess I guess one of the key takeaways people can have is once you reach a certain level of financial success, the rest, honestly, is just a pain in the ass because you've got to keep things simple, just like how we invest, Kerry. Absolutely, Tony. And with that, any further, final comments from you before we wrap up our fortnightly chat for this week? Any a couple of stocks you want to throw out there? Uh, no, not not really. Um, I'm buying quite a few stocks that are trading around eight cents. Anyway, that's people can work that out for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Lecantro from Alto Capital, as always, really appreciate you coming on to Small Caps. Great to see you, and I'll see you in a fortnight. Thanks for joining me today. Look forward to it as always. Thanks, Kerry.